And integrals aren't actually that hard. It's plugging the numbers and getting that right, huh? That's the biggest problem in math is the small stuff. My gosh, don't forget any signs, don't lose anything. Keep track of all your numbers and get that stuff right. Did y'all get your integrals correct? You got x to the fourth over four from zero to two. You got five x squared over two minus x. You didn't forget for the minus one, right? From two to six. Did you get that far? Yeah. Okay. Now we plug the numbers in. Um, Probably. Oh, I don't know if I should count on you guys on that one. Mm -hmm. Right. You really need some brackets and parentheses on this thing because you got stuff going all over the place, especially when you have those, those multiple terms being added or subtracted. This one's pretty easy. This one you just plug in the 2 and you plug in the 0, and that's very straightforward. You get 2 to the 4 over 4 minus 0 over 4. This next one, you got some things going on. Notice how you have to plug in the 6. That's giving you the 5 times 6 squared over 2 minus 6. Then you plug in the 2, but you're subtracting. Remember, it's f of b minus f of a. The whole thing. Do you see why the parentheses are important here? Okay. If you wanted to distribute, you distribute, and that sign would change. Now, typically, order operations say you add all that up together before you subtract anyway, but it's important that you know that. So, we plug it in the two. We got all that down. Uh, you want to help me with the math? That should be what, four? Yeah. Four plus, so that's four. Nine. <laughs> four. Thirty-six. That's nine. 90. 90 minus 6, 80. 84. Okay, so that's 84. 8? Minus 8, right? Looking like 80 to me. Did you get 80? Cool. How many people were able to find the 80? Do you feel okay with it if you weren't able to actually do it on your, your own? Were you okay with it? Now, what's it represent? What did we just find? The area of what? A piece. Yeah, of this when it's defined this way between zero and six. You found the area under that curve, or actually the area, uh, the the net signed area. If this thing went below the x-axis, I can't see that it does. But if it did go below the x-axis, then we would actually have. Uh, the area that's, that takes the difference between the area above and the area below. That would be net signed area. Do you feel okay with this example? Do you have any other, other questions? So whenever we have multiple terms in one, we just take the first one, put in for all the x's, solve, and then take the Absolutely. bottom Absolutely. What and this that. says to do is you plug in the 6 the whole way through, you figure it out. That's the area from 0 to 6 of this function. Then you subtract from 0 to 2. And that's what that's going to give you. Okay. And so no matter how many terms we would have. Plug them all, plug them all in, do then subtract, and then plug them all in. And that's what you do. Okay. You've got to plug them into everything. Yeah, and for this instance, your x becomes 6 every you see x. For this instance, your x becomes 2 wherever you see x, and then you subtract. And that's what this meant. <coughs> f of b minus f of a. That's what that meant. You take your b, you plug it in. You take your a, you plug it in, and then you subtract it. Now, what we've been talking about this entire time is something called net signed area. I gave you net signed area before. What net signed area was, was this.
you took the area 1, you took the area 3 because it was above the x-axis, and you subtracted area 2 because it was below. That is what your definite integral will do automatically. Without asking you, it will do that. Why does it do that? Well, because the area below counts as negative area for a definite integral. Um, that's actually one of the things that we saw with our uh, switching of signs. That's another reason why that comes out negative is because when you go from whatever this point to whatever this point is, if it's below, it's going to be subtracting those, those areas and thereby causing them to be negative. So this counts against your, your total area. Now, in order to count total area, what you do is this. You say, I want to count up the area that's between the two curves. I don't care which one's on top or which one's on bottom. I want to find out the actual area between them. So find the area that's here and here and here. That would be total area. This is net signed area. So one question I have for you is, how in the world could we get this area to become positive? How would you do that? Absolute value. Say it louder. Absolute value. Absolute value will absolutely take any negative thing and make it positive whenever you see it. Right? So what we're going to try to do is this. We're going to try to take this one and flip, flip it over and say, all right, well, total area then should become area 1, area 3, not that. We don't want that. That's going to count as negative area. What we want to do is find a way to flip it over here. and make it count for us. That would be total area. For total area, we need to change the sign of area 2. In other words, if, if you kind of go on further than this, you say, well, I want to change the sign of any area that's below the x-axis. If I can do that, then that negative area actually counts as positive area, and we add it up together. And what we end up doing is we end up finding the area between two curves. One of the curves is the function. The other curve is simply the x-axis. Now, in section 5.1, we go further, and we actually do legit two curves, not just the x-axis. But keep in mind that this is exactly what we are doing, is finding the area between two curves. So I'm going to draw on this later. You understand? So this is one curve, this is the other curve, it's a very simple curve, it's just x equals zero, but what we're doing is finding the area that's bounded between two curves. That's what we're doing literally. In order to do that, that's positive, that's positive, that's negative. We have to change the sign of that for the x-axis, that's the idea. So for total area, we need to change the sign of area two, or in other words, the area of any uh, piece of the region that is negative. <coughs> In this context, in this context, excuse me, that's the area that's below the x-axis. No, I'll show you how to do it right now. Here is net signed area. Net signed area said you start at A, you go to B. You just take the integral of whatever function you have, and whatever happens, happens. Positive area means most of it's above the x-axis. Negative area means most of it's below the x-axis. Even if we cross over, it just basically says your net change, what, what is mostly happening, whether you have more positive than negative or more negative than positive, no matter what it actually is on, the, on your graph. Does that make sense to you? Now, total area says, no, 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 no. We're going to take all the negatives and we're going to make them positives. What are we going to do with the positives? We're going to leave them alone. The thing that leaves positives alone and changes negatives to positives is, of course, absolute value, like you said. So total area says, all right, we're still going from A to B. But now we have the absolute value of f of x.
just remember one thing. The absolute value of f of x, so the absolute value of any function is actually piecewise. So it's going to look kind of like this is why we did this first. It says you keep f of x if f of x is positive. You make it negative f of x if f of x is negative. That's what you do absolute value. It says, shoot, man. If your function is positive, why are you going to change it? That's going to be a positive area. In fact, we know it's going to be a positive area from one of the properties I taught you before. Whenever your function is completely above the x-axis, hopefully you're listening to this, whenever your function is completely above the x-axis, your area would be positive. You remember that? Whenever your function is completely below the x-axis, your area would be negative. If we make an area, a negative area, negative, that's changing the sign of your negative area, it will become positive. So here's what it says. This area will be positive. This area, this area will be negative, so we're going to change the sign, thereby making it positive. Are you clear on this? Did that blow your mind? Like a grenade? <laughs> Did I really? Sweet, I hope so. Would you like to see an example in practice? Yeah. It's not hard. Not hard. It's going to look a lot like this, as a matter of fact. There's just one more step to be able to figure out where you separate it. You see, we just did this piecewise function, only in this piecewise function, I gave you the separating mark, right? I said you go from 0 to 2 and 2 to 6. All you're going to have to do is figure out where that mark is for yourself. What that's called is a ha ha sign analysis test. Bam! Told you this is exciting. Exciting stuff here, folks. Sign analysis. How can you not get excited with a sign analysis test? Find the area between f of x equals 1 minus x squared and the x-axis on 0, 2. Well, what we mean is total area. Let me, let me insert that right here. Find total area. Total area between that. Because net signed area would be very easy. Net signed area, you would just take the integral. Look at it. Here would be net signed area. It would be from, where, where would your integral start, ladies and gentlemen? Where? Where would it end? Your function is? Uh, 1 minus x squared dx. This right here is net signed area. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It would take the area above the x-axis, subtract the area below the x-axis because it would be negative, and that would be your net gain, your net change in area. Okay, that's what that would be. This says, ah, no, total area. The total area will do this. It will take the negative area, it will flip it above the x-axis, or at least it will change the sign of it.